Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. In my previous video about free RTOS, I covered how to send or receive data using Q. A Q can only hold the data of same type. If we want to transfer the data of different types, we have to use structure queue, and in this video, we are going to discuss about it. We will start by creating the project in cube IDE. Select the controller you are using. Give some name to the project, and click finish. In the cube MX, first of all I am selecting external crystal for the clock. Go to sys, and select the time base anything other than systic. I am selecting timer 6. UART 2 is to communicate with the computer. Select the free RTOS version 1, and leave everything as it is. This default task will be created, and we will deal with it later. Now go to the clock setup, the crystal is 8 MHz, and I want the controller to run at 180 MHz. Click save to generate the project. I am not going to use the CMSYS API, so go to cmsys.h file, and copy all these. We will include them directly in our project. Comment out the cmsys file. We will remove the default task related functions, which were generated by default. Let's start with the coding now. First to define the queue handler. Next, we need to define the task handlers. I will be using two sender tasks, and one receiver task. Like I said in the beginning, that we will be sending different data types to the same queue. To do that, we need to create a structure of all those data types. I am creating this structure, which have a pointer to the character, an integer, and an unsigned 16-bit integer. Let's call it my struct. These will be required too. Inside the main function, we first need to create a queue, that can hold the structure type. This queue can store two elements, which are of the type my struct. These string will be printed, based on if the queue was created or not. After creating queue, we will create the tasks. Looks like I forgot to define the task functions. Let's define them now.
These functions are, where the task related code will be written. X task create takes the following parameters. Task function, some name of the task, stack depth, the parameter to the task, the priority of this task, and the handler of this task. Note that I am using same priority of 2, for both the sender tasks. Receiver task have lower priority. After creating the tasks, we will start the scheduler. Now let's write the codes for these tasks. First the sender1 task. I am declaring a pointer to my struct. This is to convert the delay to ticks. When the control enters the task, this string will be printed on the console. Now, before assigning the data, we must allocate the memory for this pointer to the structure. To do so, we will use PV port malloc function. It's defined in the portable.h file. It takes size as the parameter. There is also vport free to free the allocated memory. I am guessing you are already familiar with the malloc function. pvport malloc is also the same, but you can consider it as safer when using the free RTOS. The size of memory we need is same as the size of my struct. Now we will load the data to the structure. And then send this data to the queue. XQ send takes the following parameters. The handler of the queue, the address of the data, and the amount of time to wait if the queue is full. If the data is successfully sent to queue, it will return PD pass. And this string will be printed to the console. Let's make it a bit more interesting. Index 1 will be incremented by 1 each time the control enters this task. These values will be modified based on this index 1 value. And at last, this task will go into suspension for 2 seconds. Similarly, sender task 2 will also send the data to the queue every 2 seconds. Now, let's write the receiver task. Our PTR to struct is another pointer to my struct. This is where the received data will be stored. Converting 3 seconds to ticks. This string will be printed when the control enters the receiver task. Now, we will receive the data from the queue. XQ receive takes the following parameters. The handler of the queue, address of the variable, where the data should be stored, and the wait time in case the queue is empty. It will return PD pass, if the data is received from the queue. Here we will allocate new memory location to store the string. I am expecting the size of string could be 100 bytes. Whenever you are using sprintf in the free RTOS, make sure you allocate the memory like this. 
otherwise, sprintf will cause hard fault error. This string will be stored in the PTR pointer location. And we will send this string to the UART. After sending, free the location of the PTR, that we just created. We must also free the memory that we allocated in both the sender tasks. So we will use v port free, and the argument will be the rptr to struct. This way the memory will be free for the pointer, which was received by the queue, and the other pointer will be safe. I will demonstrate this in a while. We also need to include the sddio for the sprintf, and string.h for the string related functions. Let's build this code now. There are no errors, so we will debug the code. I am using Hercules for the serial console. Let's run this now. I am going to let it run for a while. So the queue was created successfully. It entered the sender2 task, sent the data to the queue, and task got suspended. Somehow the data is not printing properly here. So we will just look at the received data. Data from sender1 is printed. Data from sender2. Again from sender1, with new counter value of 2, and large value increased. Same result from the sender2 task. Let's run it freely. As you can see, the values are printing from both the tasks, also the counter is increasing, and so is the large value. Sender1. Sender2. Now, Let's see how the memory allocation works. Reset the debugger. I will put a breakpoint here. And here. And here. Note that I am watching this in the variables tab, and not in the live expression. We hit the first breakpoint. Keep an eye at the PTR to struct. It's showing zero right now. When I stepped over this function, memory gets allocated for the PTR to struct. The location for this memory is heap plus 1964. We will just consider it as 1964. Let's run the code again. We hit another breakpoint in sender2 task. Step it over. The memory PTR to struct is now 1988.
Now we hit the breakpoint in the receiver task. Note the PTR variable. The memory allocated for it is 2012. Also our PTR to struct have the data from memory 1964, which is associated with sender 1 PTR to struct right now. Let's add another breakpoint here. We have already freed the memory of PTR, so 2012 location is free now. If we step over this, sender1 PTR to struct is also freed now. If we run the code now, we hit the sender1 breakpoint again. As the memory 1964 was free, it will be allocated to sender1 again. Let's run it. We hit the sender 2 breakpoint. The memory 1988 is already occupied, and next free slot is 2012. Here 2012 will be allocated for the sender 2 PTR to struct. Guys, this is just the memory allocation, as the queue already have two waiting elements, so sender 2 can't send the data to the queue right now. We are in the receiver task right now. Note that, our PTR to struct have the data from the memory location of 1988, which was allocated to sender 2 task before. PTR was allocated the memory at 2036, and was freed in the previous step. After running this statement, memory location of 1988, which was associated with the sender 2 task is also freed. Again we are in the sender 1 task. The lowest slot available right now is 1988, and this will be allocated to the sender 1 PTR to struct. This is how the memory allocation works. As I mentioned, we free the memory after receiving the data, and this way, only the memory allocated to the pointer that we received, gets free, and other data remains safe. This is it guys. I hope you understood the concept of structured queue, and how to use the memory allocation in FreeRTOS. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments if you have doubts. Be safe, and don't step out of your home. Have a nice day.